Osteoarthritis has numerous names. It's also called degenerative joint disease. It's known as DJD arthritis or osteoarthritis. And it's basically wear and tear. So we all have cartilage that lines the end of the bones. Cartilage, if you've seen the end of a chicken bone, it's smooth and white. That's the joint surface cartilage. It provides a smooth gliding surface. It acts as a cushion or a shock absorber in between the bones. And it protects the ends of the bone. And arthritis is a degenerative disease. It's wear and tear. Uh, basically, the cartilage wears away. It's kind of like the tread of the tire in your car wearing away over time. And as that occurs, the bones get closer and closer together. As that occurs, there are nerve endings in the end of the bone. Uh, when those contact each other, you begin to have pain in the knee. Other causes of pain, briefly to mention, uh, I'll see injuries or acute injuries, uh, typically as a result of a slip and fall type of injury or twisting injury. In those cases, I'm going to be looking more for a ligament tear or a torn cartilage. Uh, somebody has a lot of swelling or pain, uh, tenderness on either side of the knee that I might be suspicious they tore a ligament. Uh, if they have pain deeper inside the knee or what we call mechanical symptoms or locking or they can't straighten your knee out, then I might be looking for a torn cartilage or what we call a meniscus. And the meniscus is a pad in between the two bones, kind of like the cartilage in your ear, uh, and that can get torn and cause pain. And they're also kind of what we call non-traumatic injuries. So sometimes people just get up and they twist a little bit, or they're walking across the room and they feel a sudden pop and pain. Uh, I'm going to be looking for torn cartilage in those people. Those are more acute injuries, but those people come in uh, or say they had a sudden event that caused the pain. <coughs> In the other cases of arthritis, it, it's more of a gradual process. Again, it's wear and tear and breakdown of the joint surface cartilage. About 46% of people will develop arthritis in their knee in their lifetime. The knee is the biggest joint in the body, subject to significant stress through the course of our lives. It's estimated that about 10% of these people will develop what we call unique compartmental arthritis, meaning pain in just one part of the knee. We divide the knee into three compartments, what we call the medial side or the inside part of your knee, or what would be the left side of your right knee. And there's the lateral compartment, which is the outside of the right side of your right knee, and the, uh, the telephemoral point, which is underneath the kneecap. And the kneecap slides against the, the, the femur, which is the bone in your thigh. There's really like two joints in the knee. So there's the joint between the thigh bone and the shin bone, or the femur, the tibia, and then also between the kneecap and the femur. About 24% of patients will get that arthritis underneath the kneecap, and osteoarthritis of the knee is the most common form of arthritis, the leading cause of disability worldwide. And I'm just going to briefly mention, there's other types of arthritis, there's what we call inflammatory arthritis, things like rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic. The initial treatment for arthritis is typically conservative. Weight loss is important. I mentioned that the knee is the biggest joint in the body. It's subject to really about four times body weight. So uh, when you, if somebody weighs 200 pounds when they're walking, they actually put 800 pounds of force on their knee, and that's really substantial. Losing 25 pounds can take 100 pounds of force off the knee. That can be the difference sometimes between having knee pain not getting knee pain. Uh, exercise is very important. I like to have people work on strengthening uh, of the thigh muscles, but especially the quad, the quadriceps, which are the muscles in the front of the thigh. Those are the muscles you use to get up out of the chair, to go up and down the stairs, and get out of the car. Uh, when somebody's knee gives out on them, it's typically because those muscles are weak, or they have failed, or they have become fatigued, and the knee gives out. Uh, what I like best are straight leg raising exercises, lying flat on the floor or in the bed, raising the legs slowly, maybe three seconds up, three seconds down, starting with 10, 15, 20, whatever, working on up to 100 in a row, which is pretty hard to do, but that really does help strengthen those muscles. And having better strength won't cure arthritis and will make it go away, but it can sometimes be the difference between being able to function with your arthritis or not. And then it's also important to work on maintaining motion, the range of motion of the knee. Uh, typically, people do get stiff naturally if it's painful. There's a tendency to not want to move the joint, but as it gets stiffer, it becomes harder to walk, you become less mobile, 
and that it exacerbates the pain. We also use what are called NSAIDs or the non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drugs. Some of the old common ones are Advil and Aleve, Motrin, uh, those things, and those can be helpful uh, in, uh, in minimizing inflammation. And inflammation is one of the main causes of pain from arthritis in the knee. Uh, and so that can be helpful. And there are prescription medications, prescription anti-inflammatory medications that we give also, things like Relafin, uh, Voltaire and Bulbic, um, Meloxicam, those are very common prescribed anti-inflammatory medications. The downside of those medications is that they do have side effects, especially taken in higher doses or for long periods, and they can potentially have some liver or kidney toxicity long term. So if you're taking those for more than maybe six months at a time, you should always check with your regular doctor. Make sure they check your liver and kidney functions and make sure everything's functioning well as you take that medication. Sometimes activity modification is helpful or avoiding high stress activities, high impact activities like jogging, running, that type of thing, jumping. Obviously, it's going to be hard on the knee, especially since I mentioned four times body weight. Uh, and actually, running uh, is seven or eight times body weight. So, yes, that's something probably to avoid with arthritis. Sometimes the use of a cane uh, is helpful. It can help to unload that joint a little bit. Uh, what you want to do with a cane is use it in the opposite hand, so if it's the right hand, possibly for partial knee replacement. On the other hand, if they have pain all throughout their knee on both sides, uh, or significant pain on the kneecap, then I would probably consider them for total knee replacement. People that have arthritis just in one single compartment, if it's on the inside part of the knee, they will often come in their bow legged uh, because that's where the bone on bone contact is. If it's on the outside part of the knee, those people are, are not knee. And again, if there's symmetrical wear on both sides of the knee, there typically is no uh, deformity like that. Person you replace is becoming more popular. I don't have the, the current statistics, but about 50,000 of those were done in 2007 versus 600,000 total knee replacements. Um, the, again, the concept is the same for both of those procedures. And we are resurfacing the, the bottom of the femur, the thigh bone, and half the tibia. Um, it does the advantage of partial knee replacement. It preserves the normal anatomy of the opposite side of the knee. You're preserving the anterior cruciate ligament, which is the main ligament on the inside of the knee that provides most of the stability. You're preserving the meniscus or the cartilage on the outside part of the knee. And we're also preserving all the bone and joint surface cartilage on the outside of the knee. Uh, so it, it allows for a more normal feeling knee. Uh, it's closer to a normal knee in function. There's something called proprioception, which is what we call position sense. And so as you're walking, you're going up and down, going up and down stairs, your, your brain tells your knee where it is so that it can function properly. And, and the partial knee replacement is compared to the total knee proprioception or precision sense is, is improved. And because it's partial, we're not doing the whole knee, it probably allows for a higher level of activity after surgery. The benefits of partial knee replacement is done for a much smaller incision. Uh, it's less invasive. I think consider partial, the, the, the typical total knee uh, replacement your typical, let's say, 75-year-old that has a total knee replacement may use a walker for six weeks and a cane for six weeks. So that's 12 weeks. That's three months. Uh, I think it's about three months, maybe three to four month recovery period. Partial knee replacement is probably half that. So in most cases, it's, it's cases six to eight weeks, people are really functioning very well um, because we are because it's less invasive. There tends to be less pain, we're, we're cutting less of the bones, so there's reduced blood loss. Uh, because of all that, there's a shorter hospitalization and a more rapid recovery, and again, a more natural feeling knee. And because we haven't done the whole knee, there, there's less stress on that implant that we put in, and probably less wear and loosening over time. And that's the main thing we worry about, whether it's a partial knee replacement or total knee replacement, is the plastic piece that's in there could potentially wear out. If that's the case, we could go in and take that out and put a new one in. Uh, I have to say, I really haven't had that issue uh, early ever for total knee replacement, uh, not so far for partial knee. Um, and 
loosening would be the other thing if the metal pieces come loose from the bone, then that has to be redone. The advantage of a partial knee replacement, if somebody's a candidate for that, it's easier to revise that if it does become loose. But again, loosening doesn't seem to be a, a, a huge issue at this point either. Uh, but we can revise a partial knee replacement to a regular total knee. If a total knee replacement has to be re revised, it has to be revised to a revision total knee, which is a bigger implant that requires cutting more of the bone. And the function of a, of a revision total knee is probably not as good as a primary total, total knee, and certainly not as good as a partial knee replacement. After surgery, uh, typically I'll, I'll let people bear weight and uh, the, the weight there is tolerated, um, it's solid when we put it in. Uh, often we'll get people up the same day he has surgery. Uh, definitely the next day we'll start therapy and stand with the full weight on it. And we also work on bending the knee. We have something called a CPM machine which stands for continuous passive motion. That just moves the knee very slowly after surgery. We start at about 0 to 45 degrees and increase it as, as you can tolerate it to get it moving. The stiffness is one of the things we worry about or try to counteract. Um, and physical fit, and uh, typically uh, we use the CPM machine for a partial knee replacement just while you're in the hospital, and, and uh, often totally the patients take it home. So it takes a little longer to get the knee moving. We always start physical therapy right after surgery, work on the range of motion of the knee, and again work on strengthening the thigh muscles, uh, the thigh muscles, quads, and the hamstrings. Uh, like people start off with a walker. Uh, Whenever they're ready, switch to a cane and then they can walk independently. And it's not unusual if I have a partial knee replacement patient. Uh, I usually see them in about two weeks to take their staples out. Many of them come in not using a walker or a cane. Uh, blood clots are something else we worry about, so we do give a blood thinner after that to see if we prevent that. Activities after knee replacement uh, typically prefer a low impact activity. Again, I mentioned. Running, jogging is, is quite a bit of stress on the knee. Uh, doubles tennis is, is fine, golf, bowling, fishing, working. Uh, most normal activities people can do and, and get their life back and get on with the activity. Potential complications of either of those surgeries, total or partial knee replacement. Infection uh, is the main thing that we're worried about. We do take precautions against that. We give antibiotics before, right before surgery. We took continue those for 24 hours afterwards. Uh, bleeding is something that, that's uh, occasionally an issue. There are no major blood vessels right where we're working, so, uh, but we are cutting the bones and get losing from the bone. Um, I use a tourniquet during surgery so we don't forget to get much during, we get something afterwards. Uh, occasionally somebody will need a trans blood transfusion, but that's probably, in my experience, maybe 10 or 15% of the time maybe more likely in an elderly female you know, who tends to be anemic. Uh, it's probably the, the, the one most high at risk for uh, needing blood transfusion. Uh, neurovascular damage, the damage to nerves or blood vessels, uh, and there's a, a possibility, but there aren't any really any major nerves right in that area, so the chance for that is minimal. Uh, there are ligaments we have to watch out for. Um, I think that's something that's preventable just by being cautious and we get into another type of procedure that we're doing that really should should definitely eliminate any possibility of ligament or tendon damage. Uh, and I mentioned before loosening of the prosthesis or wear. Those are things that typically occur well beyond the procedure, uh, 15 to 20 years or beyond. People always ask me for partial knee replacement, what, what happens if the other side of the knee gets bad? And statistically, it does happen, but it's 2% in 20 years. So it's really very low, and so I don't think that's enough risk. But it does mean that 2 out of 100 people may need the other side done or converted to a total knee. Uh, but I don't, I don't think that's worth not doing a partial with somebody that's a candidate for it. Um, and again, as before, a partial knee, if it needs to be revised, it can be revised to a total knee. Total knee can be or a, a total knee can be revised to a revision total. So I mentioned the, the knee anatomy. There's the femur, which is the thigh bone, the patella, the kneecap. Um, the fibula is, is one of the smaller bones on the side of the leg, which isn't really in the joint. And there's the 
tibia, which is the, the shin bone. And again, there's cartilage that covers the end of the bone. What you see on this picture that's white, that's the joint surface cartilage. Again, it provides a, a, a cushion that protects the ends of the bone and provides a smooth lying surface. And that's what wears away over time. Now, this is a, a, an x-ray. It's a healthy x-ray. It's actually a 16-year-old. But um, this is a normal looking knee. And when you look at that, you can see there's a space in between the bones. Now, there's really not a space there. There's cartilage there. Cartilage doesn't show up by an x-ray. Um, but that's normal, healthy cartilage. And I expect that space to be the same on both sides of the knee. And now this is somebody with severe arthritis. You can see that there's what we call bone-on-bone -bone contact. There's no space between the bones. And that's both sides of the knee. You can know, also see, if you look at that, the, the two bones straight up and down, but the one on the bottom is a little bit crooked. This, this guy was bow-legged. But he's wearing on both sides of the knee. That's severe arthritis, bone on bone contact. And this is his end result. This is a total knee replacement. So because he had disease on both sides of the knee, actually in the front of the knee also on the kneecap, I, I replaced the knee. Everything you see here that's white is metal. Uh, there is plastic that goes in between the two bones. Plastic doesn't show up on the x-ray. But it basically straight, straightened out his bow-leggedness. And he's got now this metal and plastic that has very little friction. It glides smoothly and allows the pain of the bone-on-bone -bone contact to be eliminated. This is a side view of the knee just showing how it is shaped to fit the end of the bone. And I don't, I don't know if you can see it, the kneecap, you see a little white area there. There's a little wire, the, the kneecap, the, it's like a plastic button that we put on the end of, on the under, under surface of the kneecap. It really doesn't show up on the x-ray, but there's a wire marker in there so I can see where it is. Uh, the same concept, if they broke, don't fix it, a lot of times I find the kneecap looks okay, the cartilage looks okay, and in most cases I don't resurface the kneecap. Partial knee replacement is considered a minimally invasive procedure that is done through a small incision. Uh, the uh, picture you see on the right there is a longer incision, it's the traditional total knee incision versus the um, minimally invasive uh, incision, which is three to four inches long, typically in a partial knee replacement. This is a, a, a guy who had severe arthritis on just the inside part of the knee. This is the right knee. Um, it's taken as you look at as you look at him. So you can see on the inside part of the knee there, there's bone on bone contact. There's no space in between the bones. On the outside of the knee, there's a good space, a normal space. And he came in with pain just on the inside of the knee. Uh, this is his, this is his x-ray. And this is what it looks like after surgery. So this is a partial knee replacement. It's the same concept as a total knee. Metal on the bottom, the femur, metal on the top, the tibia. There is plastic that goes in between the two bones. Again, it doesn't show up on the x-ray, except there's a little wire marker in there, so I can see where it is. He was bow-legged before the procedure, and I've straightened that out. Again, he's got that metal against plastic, very little friction. The other side of his knee was not painful, and this worked very well to eliminate his pain. It can also be done on the outside or the lateral side of the knee. Uh, so this is an example of that. Now, uh, at Silver Cross, now we have a, a new system for partial knee replacements. It's called the NACO system or NACOplasty. It's actually a robotic system, and it's another way for us to prepare the bone to accept the implants after surgery. And as new to Silver Cross, I've actually been doing, I've been doing it at another facility since 2010. Uh, it's now longer than that. It's got a good track record and it's something brand new. We're excited about it here at Silver Cross. And basically, what it is, uh, the first thing we do is we get a CAT scan of the knee, and that's a computerized x-ray. We can take those images, it gives us, we can get a three-dimensional image. It's like if you took the, the bone out and you could spin it around and look at it. And we, based on that, we can map the bone. Uh, a computer system that operates the robot 
is a is kind of like a GPS system. So we map the bone in space, we match it up to the computer, we can plan ahead of time what size implants we're going to use, where they're going to be positioned, what's the best rotation for the best function, the best movement of the knee, and the best stability. And how exactly are we going to pre prepare the bone for those implants to fit perfectly? It, it is a robot, but it's, it's 100% controlled by me during surgery. So it's not like I step out of the room and let the robot do this thing. It's completely hands-on. Uh, there's a big machine, probably about the size of this podium here, with an arm, the picture on the right, I know isn't very good, but it's got an arm that comes out and there's a high-speed burr attached to it. It looks like a dental drill. Uh, I kind of hate to mention dentistry, but uh, you're asleep during it so nobody feels anything. Or here's the drill going. Uh, but basically, what that robot does, it allows me to precisely move it in and out and cut the bone exactly within tolerances of a half a millimeter. Uh, so we're not removing too much bone, we're only removing the bone that we planned on ahead of time. I'm constantly double checking that it all makes sense to me that where, where we're removing the bone is exactly where we need to. But it, it does allow us a very precise positioning of the implants. The idea being that the more precise that we can position them, the more solid they're going to be when we put them in, the less stress is on the components over time, and the better the knee is going to function over time. And basically, currently, it's, it's the robot system is for partial knee replacement. They are coming up with the application for uh, total knee replacement. They, they say it's going to be ready by December. See about that. But basically, if people that qualify for partial knee replacement, patients that had pain on one side of the knee or the other, uh, and we get people that have not responded at all to conservative treatment, and if they choose to get infections, uh, if those don't work or lose effectively, uh, effectiveness, partial knee replacement is a good option. People Ask how long do these last? I mentioned the total knee is 90 percent of them are still doing well, 15 years. Uh, partial knee replacement is relatively new, although I've been doing them in various forms since 2003, so that's, that's 13 years so far. I mean, it, it's had a good record. There are, there are some studies uh, elsewhere. Uh, the, like they're lasting you about the same as, as the total knee, so 15, 20 years is not unreasonable. Procedure. We're really thinking that these are going to work. Initially, we thought, well, maybe they would last five to seven years, and then at first we would get a total knee, but we're finding they're really lasting longer, as long as a total knee. So, again, the idea of, well, if the other side is going to go bad anyway, might as well do a total knee. I don't think really holds water. I think partial knee replacement really is an excellent procedure um, for this, again, allowing better function. And again, um, the robot allows us more precise, um, we only have uh, precise um, shaping of the bone up to, we only have to remove that part of the bone that we actually need to for the components to fit. That means there's minimal blood loss, quicker rehabilitation. We can do it through a small incision, which again makes the procedure go much more smoothly. And the Result is better. And this is a patient, I actually did total knee on one, one side, partial knee replacement on the other side. Um, his left knee, which is on your right there, uh, he just had bad disease on both sides. So I, did, I think I did that one first. Uh, he, he did well, but the other side, it was just pain on the inside part of his knee and did a partial knee replacement. That's worked well for him. But you can see on this picture the difference between the 